Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome you guys to my channel. Today, we're going to cover the beginning of the Second Coming crossover, where we have Cable. He came back from the future. He's with Hope Summers to come to the present day. And basically, Bastion and every single resurrected mutant hating character during the history of Marvel are waiting for him because they want to take down Hope, who. For Bastion, who is also um, Nimrod, thinks that she's the key to securing their future. They have to stop her. She's a menace to their existence. While the X-Men think that Hope Summers is some type of mutant messiah, that she's going to be the key to bringing mutants back. And so everyone's scrambling to find hope first and um the thing is like i've been reading quite a few stories that feel like all-out wars and this one in particular the second coming has that feeling you feel like the stakes are high um especially some focus on the character of nightcrawler not being happy with how the x-men are operating uh that he discovers the, the existence of x-force and the x-morse Force during that time were sanctioned to be able to kill if needed, and Nightcrawler was not happy with this. And I really loved the return of Bastion because I liked the, the Zero Tolerance story arc. I thought he was a cool villain. And also the big reveal that Bastion was actually the fusion of Nimrod and Master Mold made him even more interesting. And as I mentioned before, we have the return of thanks to the techno-organic virus and what happened in X-Force. All these famous characters that were mutant haters like William Stryker, Cameron Hodge, um, the Leper Queen, and many, many more were brought back from the dead. They're all working with, <laughs> with uh, Bastion. They want to stop and uh, capture Hope and also kill as many mutants as possible. So the X-Men are able to track down Hope and Cable to some motel out in the boonies. Obviously, the bad guys are hot on their tail, too. We get a pretty awesome first confrontation because William Stryker, uh, who is a pretty awesome X-Men bad guy. I always loved him. I love to hate this character. Like, he came prepared. Like, he knows, like, he has to take down the teleporters first. So he, he actually commissions a special gun that's based on magic to take down magic, teleporter the limbo. And that, I thought to myself, when I saw that happen, it's like, what a good idea. Then they try to take down Nightcrawler immediately after that. The issues that we're going to cover, um, I'm going to put them down in the description because there are quite a few of them. And if I start trying to read them, I'm going to probably mix them up and jumble them up around. While we have the Doom Mutants, they go in, they want to infiltrate the level of manpower the, the villains have, the, these human hate groups, as I always label these guys. We sort of get the return of the smileys, these egg-shaped robots with a smiley face. That's old-school X-Factor that are working with Cameron Hodge. Here's that cannon that sh sends magic into limbo. And there's just one awesome moment where Cameron Hodge realizes he's under attack, and this tendril comes out of the wall, and fuses with his neck and rips out his spine <laughs> and he becomes that giant scorpion monster that he was during the Extinction Agenda that I remember. I love that design, but Cameron Hodge as a villain, he was really awesome. He made a pact with the demon to become immortal and the dude really hated mutants, but he was like the public relations to X-Factor. He has a special hate for Warren Worthington, so he orchestrated a whole situation to actually bring down X Factor from the inside. I think he's the one responsible for the explosion of Warren Worthington III's plane. Uh, I might be wrong there. But the thing is, the guy's a classic X Factor villain. Cameron Hodge, obviously, he's insanely powerful. He's like this gigantic mech robot evil thing. He actually puts the characters, the New Mutants, on the ropes, almost kills Karma. This actually leads to Warlock, who was actually killed originally by Cameron Hodge, to kill Cameron Hodge to save his teammates. And Warlock made it, uh, like he made a pact that he, with himself that he would never kill again. So this sort of breaks Warlock 
infantile mind. <laughs> Puts him in a great state of depression after doing that. Nightcrawler and um, Rogue are actually able to secure Hope, get her to escape, but they have Nimrod hot on the tail, and Nimrod looks totally badass. And it's a very sad because in this story, Nightcrawler sort of loses faith with his teammates, with the X-Men, with what he discovers about the X-Force and Cyclops and what they had been doing. But he's willing to fight to save Hope, who is being super redundant, the last hope of mutant kind, and has the balls to go up toe-to-toe -to -toe against Nimrod with Rogue, sacrificing his life. He sacrifices um, his life to save Hope, taking a punch right through the chest. And it's actually a pretty tragic ending for, De uh, for Nightcrawler. He stays dead for quite a while. That's, I have to commend Marvel. They didn't bring him back. And he's one of my favorite X-Men. Like, over the years, I really learned to love Nightcrawler. So, I'm going to leave this video here. Second Coming, it's a great story. We're going to cover the rest of it, obviously. In the, in the description, I'm going to put the issues and the writers and so on and so forth. So, check it out. It's worth a read. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.